So resifungin as prophylaxis in this population has a big advantage to be only once a week. There is obviously a downside since it's only available intravenous at that time, but a subcutaneous formulation is also under development. So it really has some potential advantages to avoid some of the other medications that might cause nausea and vomiting in this patient population. It's at such high risk for that. So intravenous resifungin to physicians is really a big advantage. We know that they're getting a good blood level of the medication, and we know that correlates very strongly with efficacy from other echinocannons that have been developed. So we think that's a big advantage. To patients, they may not prefer that regimen quite as much, but I think when you look through the side effect profile and try to minimize what they take into their GI tract that can cause nausea, such as other antifungals or other medications, it's a big potential advantage. Yeah, intravenous administrations, uh, the patients do need to come to one of the facilities to receive that, so we know they get it, so, so there's definitely the real potential to, that, that we know they have good drug levels for the duration of the treatment course. The next steps for resifungin really are to move on to a phase three for the treatment of invasive candidiasis. That'll be really exciting. It'll look at efficacy as well as toxicity in that. And then also the new study that's going to look at prophylaxis in the bone marrow transplant population, which has some real potential advantages of prophylaxis against yeast, against molds, and against pneumocystis.